Hello there, Bic Benedict here. We're playing Uncharted The Lost Legacy, and this is my crushing difficulty guide and walkthrough. We're currently on chapter 5 of 9. It is entitled The Great Battle. Uh, the Great Battle illusion is something from the uh, the backstory of the of the uh, of the actual uh, of the story that you come across. It was something of uh, of just from the lore factor of the game uh of course great is subjective but in my opinion there's not a there's not a great battle in this chapter there's a, there's a shitty battle um but before i forget i wanted to mention that do you remember at the end of the last video i mentioned that it doesn't matter what you take into this chapter as far as your weapons because the game is going to take them away from you uh well that's only half true and i apologize for any misunderstanding about that and I also made an annotation in the uh, the video description for chapter 4 to clarify what what happens actually um, after you do the uh, the puzzle that's coming up um, you're gonna be doing the cinematic moment where you're trying to flee to the top of uh, some sort of uh, well and there's a point at which uh, a, a spray of water pushes you off the platform and what happens is at that point when it pushes you off you lose your heavy weapon but whatever sidearm you're carrying remains intact as well as the ammo count for it so the weapon that I have is one that I really enjoy to have it's called the Chris Kriskov X it's I it's really hard I think it's the Kriskov xs weapon it's uh, it's got a scope on it and you can get it in the previous chapter but bear in mind you don't need to have it i'm just telling you what what i have um because that weapon is actually quite helpful on the the chapter that is entitled the lost legacy um do you know that stealth section where it um it has you um trying to navigate platforms while enemies with laser sights um, are potentially hitting you and it's very difficult to deal with that section because of the fact that most of the time you're hanging off a ledge and when you're hanging off a ledge you can't use a heavy weapon you can only use your sidearm and to have an advantage on that part it is very helpful to have the Kriskov X S because you can zoom in with it and you can do that while you're dangling off a ledge I'm not sure what happened over here the the game was uh, just not letting me use Nadine as a ledge there to get up but um, so I, I apologize about any misconfusion about or, or sorry confusion about um, bringing weapons it, it is it is important to know um, because the battle that we're talking about, the shit battle, and it really is shit. When I did this walkthrough before, um, last year, when I intended to do it, when I was playing it on the PS4, um, I did it without any deaths, but it is very difficult to do it without dying, and the main reason I usually like to do things like that is just to have the... Um, the action sequences not have any abrupt edits and have it just be seamless without any deaths because it's quite hard sometimes to um, do match cuts uh, in these particularly uh, uh, wild and chaotic uh, fights that you do that change quite a bit so what I, what I settled on was um, I used my sidearm uh, the scope of it to um, to scope in the edits so there's a couple of points at which when I zoom in it's actually um, transitioning to another um, reset of a checkpoint so there's nothing nefarious about it uh, it's just a way of and they don't look as good as they could but it's a way to um, to link the footage as best as I can with match cuts and it's not any particular, particularly enjoyable section either. It's um, it's just rough and it's awkward, and unfortunately that 
summarizes a lot of the combat in this game. It's just, it doesn't feel good. And when a game that's based on combat, somewhat, I mean, it's one third combat. You've got, uh, you've got puzzle solving, mountaineering, and shooting. Um, but when one of those facets falls short, you, you really do feel it. And it isn't the worst uh, game for shooting out there. Um, I just I just don't enjoy it the way I enjoyed the combat in the original trilogy. Anyway, so there is going to be a puzzle coming up over here. And there is a trophy for completing this puzzle. Doing it in under, I think, 10, 10 moves. So I've got you covered on that as well as just solving the puzzle in general. Yeah, everybody's favorite puzzle. I, I hate this puzzle, but it's not too difficult. Um, so I'm gonna use the centerpiece here. Do you see the crank that I just used? I'm gonna use that as a reference point. Um, so from the reference point, anything, the, the one to the left of the reference point is one. And the one to the right, this one here is 12. So the combination is 9, 12, and then 2. So here's 2. So always use that centerpiece as a reference point. And then we're going to go back to 9. See, 9's right here. And then we need to go to 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4 is right here. And then the final ones are 6. 1 and then 10. So there's 6. We'll just double back real quick. Here's number 1. And then 10. So I tried to um I tried to make the the great battle. I mean, it's not really what it's referencing anyway, but um, I tried to reset from in the encounter many times to try to just do the fight over without getting killed and it just ended up not being worth it. But anyway, notice that we have the rifle. We clearly have the rifle equipped here. And then there's a point at which you're going to lose it. And I'll show you the exact point at which you lose it over here. Uh, this isn't particularly challenging. So you don't really need to worry about too much. Of course, anything can ha any number of things can happen. But they usually got you covered for the jumps. I jumped really early there, and it still landed me on there. Okay, so you're going to get knocked over right around here. So note the gun's gone here. So she lost the gun. And I think them taking the gun away from you over here is just to balance the, um, the great battle. But even so, um, I don't think it would really tip the scales in your favor too much to bring whatever you want. But I thought they took both of your weapons away over here, but they don't. So you still have your sidearm over here. And I don't know how much ammunition you get for this weapon. I could be maxed out at 14, I'm not sure. Okay, so there's going to be a pair of enemies over here that you can have Nadine help you. And they're they're really easy. They never turn around. And you're going to be picking up the uh, the heavy weapon off of one of them and getting some ammo from the other one. So I'm going to let her catch up a little bit so that we can do this in sync. Uh, if you make any noise, there's one guy that will jump down and start shooting at you or you have a fist fight, whatever it turns out to be. Um, if you do it silently, you'll uh, climb up the wall and throw him off the wall, which is what we're going to do. So just follow her lead. And then now we have the Type 95 as well as uh, the, uh, the the Kristoff XS. And then as you come up here, Nadine's going to warn you that somebody's coming. I think this guy has uh, a standard handgun. I'm going to pass that one up. And then you can get a an aerial kill on this first guy. And then what I would recommend is... Now you're going to see me aim over here and probably shoot. I was just scoping in an edit right there. I normally wouldn't even 
deal with those guys. Um, and now you, you have a choice here. You can climb this over here, or you can go around. Nadine will inevitably fight this guy for you. So the main problem about this is just finding advantageous places to stand and kill enemies and uh, not get too um, uh, gung-ho about going forward until you've cleared the way a little bit. Like, these two guys need to go. Um, but there is a pretty rough spot over here where once you cross a gap, you're going to get ambushed by a couple of guys. And these guys are not the hardest guys in the world, but they can be bitchy like all enemies can be bitchy in the Lost Legacy and they'll start throwing grenades. So you really don't want to stand over there. Jumping back is, is pretty helpful. And you can use the Rafika for a throwaway weapon over here, which is what I'm doing. These bastards and their fucking grenades, I... You know, it just robs the enjoyment of the game, them doing that. Throwing grenades with their pinpoint accuracy. And then whenever you throw a grenade, you hardly ever hit anything. So this guy's behind some foliage. I'm having a hard time seeing him. But it is helpful to have that particular weapon with the scope on it. But again, you don't need it. Okay, so we've picked up the Rafika. The Rafika to me is a throwaway, throwaway weapon in general. I, I just really don't like it. But I'll tell you where you get a checkpoint. It's, it's good in the sense that um, it has some pretty fair checkpoints. I'll give it that. But the main problem about this game is in Uncharted 4, you, you just don't get much ammunition ever. You know? You're always in cover with zero ammo for both weapons. I mean, not always, but you know, it just happens all too often. And, you know, getting hit by these grenades, getting staggered to kingdom fucking come. But this is a pretty good spot back here to stand. And this is, this is, um, it, it's hard in the sense that you've, you've got to, you've got to put yourself in really vulnerable positions just to go through the normal hoops that the game wants you to go through. Um, because you've got the, the tank shooting at you the entire time. And the combination of the tank firing at you, um, plus enemies coming up on you, catching you sometimes unawares, is, is just a big problem. So you really need to be clearing everybody you possibly can before you move up. Nadine helps a little bit, but it's not going to turn the tide of anything. So you don't quite have a checkpoint yet. Um, but you're going to get one fairly soon, so don't worry about it. We've got some pretty good shelter right here. I'm trying to ascertain, you know, what weapons are around here. What weapons are around. I think we need to go up to the left. And also, it's difficult sometimes to know the way in which you're expected to navigate this area. So when you get over here, you want to take shelter. And then when you fully regen... You want to push forward to that uh, gray container, and uh, it's going to put you in this kind of vulnerable looking position. However, you're protected behind all that rubble. And then when you swing on over to here, you get a checkpoint. And then I also scoped in an edit right over here. So if it looks a little strange, uh, Nadine is up there uh, doing melee combat with, uh, with a couple of guys up there. So she is helping in that sense. So she's clearing one or two guys for us. And then you've got a couple of guys uh, down below. And the, one of the problems over here, too, is when they decide to throw grenades, you really don't have much of an option about movement and uh, things like that. I think you can... Um, there's a ledge that you can hang off back there if you want to. Sometimes Nadine will take care of this guy for you. And also, this next part that's coming up, um, Nadine is 
script. She's supposed to help you clear one of these two enemies. There's two enemies at the top, and the idea is, in a perfect world, you would climb this, and you would grab one of them and throw, the, throw him off, and Nadine would do the same thing, but she often just doesn't do it right. It worked here, but I'm telling you, there's so many times where it just doesn't work. So if you are getting frustrated about that and don't want to even do that, um, you can shoot those guys from the other side before you even advance. And then over here, um, there's a heavy that you need to be concerned about. There's quite a few flammable containers over here that you can use to, uh, to chip away at these enemies' health. Um, I don't know exactly where they are, but the, some, some of the boxes behind them they will have uh, explosive containers and there's also something over here that you can use to hit and damage that heavy uh, the heavy is a big priority though because if he gets too close to you and he still has his helmet on there really is nothing that you can do to prevent yourself from getting killed because you can't melee with him when he's in that state but at this point you're almost you're almost to the end in fact, there's not much in the way of any more threats. The damage that you receive from the tank is pretty fair, I would say, even on crushing. It's not anything that's going to frustrate you too much and cause you to have an excessive amount of deaths. So we are coming up on the, the Notorious Chapter 6. And... That chapter definitely will take your weapons right away from you. And um, we are going to be doing stealth on it. It is a two-part engagement, though, in that um, once you do clear the, the main enemies and the, the APC, um, there's a backup that comes, like another tank that drops off a, a boatload of, of uh, enemies. Um, but when that happens... We're going to have an RPG, and we're going to shoot the, uh, the that and, and not have to, to deal with the, uh, the remaining wave because it's, it's just ridiculous. And they're not in, on any set pattern either. But the good thing about Chapter 6's APC section, at least the first wave, is that there aren't that many enemies to clear. So the idea is to clear all of the all of the soldiers and then go around and collect all of your your um your your dynamite and whatever they're calling it in this game all your dynamite the rocket launcher and everything like that um early on so you don't want to really do anything to the apc except stay out of its sight until all the soldiers are cleared. By the way, hopefully those quick time events didn't give you too many troubles. Uh, basically, all it is is his first set of punches. Uh, you want to press circle and then circle and then press square. And then after that, his second phase, it's circle, 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 and then square. It's pretty simple. Um, but we are... You know, we are fast approaching that uh, Notorious Chapter 6. And one of the things that I, I just don't like about the fight is that um, it's kind of a bad checkpoint. I, I wish they put you a little bit closer to the objective. And I'm sure you're well aware of, you know, of the goings on of this. But And again, even though this is a stealth-focused walkthrough... Uh, there's nothing wrong with, with doing combat and things like that, but you you really should. To get an advantage on this game, even if you don't want to participate in the stealth to the degree that I'm doing it, um, to have the best advantage, even if you don't like stealth, you, you do want to do stealth as much as you can to thin the numbers and then do combat you you really in this game in uncharted 4 you don't want to just start shooting from the outset that you know you just don't have an advantage that way you know they're just different games from the original trilogy is all but here's the last thing you need to do is, is just uh, turn this wheel and then we'll be in chapter six and hopefully we won't have any 
you know, tribulations of uh, egregiousness. But um, anyway, that has been Chapter 5, and I will see you in Chapter 6. Please take care. No.